we are talking today about creating video tutorials for our students um, using Screencastify and Flipgrid. So I just want you to guys to see here our contact information. Of course, you can always email our team, digitallearning at garlandic.net. You can find us on Twitter and the gram at digitalgisd, Instagram. Sorry, I should, I should say that, not just the gram. Uh, also, every day, well, Monday through Friday, and not tomorrow now since we have a holiday, but every day we are live office hours on Google Meet from 8 to 9 a.m., and then again from 2 to 3 p.m. So catch us there. Ask us questions. Um, the link is there. It's bit.ly slash DLT live office hours. So uh, you can catch us there every day or Monday through Friday except for uh, tomorrow. Also, you can drop us a message at our flip grid. That flip code is right there. So if it's outside of those hours and you just really want to ask us a question, but maybe you're like, I really don't want to type this all out in an email. I'd rather just tell them, well, drop, uh, drop a video on the flip grid. It's private. We have it set to private. So not everyone can see your uh, message and we'll respond to you personally. So those are some ways to get in touch with us. So our goals for this session are to be making a screencast with Screencastify and using Flipgrid for video interactivity with students, and then to have time for a Q&A uh, focused around these uh, tools as well. So like I said, if you have a question, please leave a question in the chat window, and I'll be sure to answer it before we end this training, or Martine will answer it as we are going. So. How do I do this? How do I record video tutorials? Um, a lot of teachers will say when it comes to making videos that it just panics them, right? They, they're like, I'm not good at it. I don't like being on camera. It's one of those skills that pe people just don't like to do sometimes. But both of these tools, I think, are going to be comfortable for you. They're going to be very simple to use, and I think really, most of all, they're going to be fun, and they're going to engage your students uh, in addition to giving you another way to provide feedback to your students. So during this time of closure, you know, it, you, some of this technology can help you kind of ward off some of the misunderstanding that students may have. If you're getting an assignment back and there were eight questions on it and all eight questions are wrong from the student, you know, how can you reteach that? Or really, how can you reach out to them first and give them some clarification? So both of these tools can help you with that. So meet Screencastify. Screencastify is a Chrome extension that you're going to add to Chrome. You don't have to get out and do that right now because remember, this is recorded. You don't have to write down everything that I'm saying. Um, I also gave you the link to the slides in the chat window so you don't have to write everything down. Uh, but we're going to add the Screencastify extension to Chrome, the Google Chrome browser. Um, it uh, will let you record your screen, record your webcam, and uh, create really quick screen recordings for your students. Uh, some of the features of Screencastify, you can record up to five minutes for free. And trust me, most students are not going to listen beyond five minutes. Most adults won't either. However, if you're thinking, you know what, I need an option for a longer video, uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, the other tool that I'm going to share with you, you can record a little bit longer, but uh, we can also chat about that during the Q&A time. You can annotate during a recording using Screencastify. You can share it to Google Classroom. So if you're uh, uh, using Google Classroom, if you're a third through 12th grade teacher, um, you can share it directly there. You can publish it to YouTube if your audience is more parents, okay, or community. An awesome feature about Screencastify is all of your videos are saved to Google Drive. So they're archived there. Um, then you can do some short editing of your clip. You can trim it, kind of take out some extra from the beginning and the end of the video. Installation, which we're going to walk through all of this. Installation is very easy. It works on a PC, on a Mac, on a Chromebook. Uh, what you do is, again, I'll model this. You search for Screencastify in the Chrome Web Store. It's like a peach colored logo. Then you're going to click Add to Chrome. Now, if your Chrome browser is out of date, you could possibly not see Screencastify. 
uh, the easiest thing to do at this point is to restart your computer um, because it will also restart Chrome and, uh, and Chrome will then usually update as soon as it's kind of restarted. So let's dive into Screencastify here. So I'm going to open a new tab and I'm just gonna Google Chrome Web Store. You can do this with me if you want or you can just kind of watch me since it's a webinar and it's kind of hard to switch back and forth. Uh, anyway, the Chrome Web Store will be your first hit that you get um, in Google. You're gonna open it. You're gonna click on extensions because you're searching for an extension. And then here in the search, you're gonna type in Screencastify. It's all one word. And this is the extension you want right here. Mine says rate it because I've already added it, okay? And it lives right here where you can see my cursor is right now. That's where it will sit. You're gonna to wanna to click Add to Chrome. And it's gonna ask you, do you wanna add this to Chrome? You're gonna to wanna to say yes or allow or that you agree and then it and give it permission basically to add to Chrome and then it will live there in the browser. Okay, so let me just dive in with kind of showing you an example of giving a student feedback, okay, uh, using Screencastify. So here's a student, okay, uh, his name is Kirby Jenner. Uh, he wrote a uh, response, an author, kind of author study about Lewis Sacker, who I really like. So also the kid is trying to suck up because he knows I like Lewis Sacker, right? So anyway, um, I want to provide feedback to Kirby on his writing. So here's what I'm going to do. Perhaps I got this um, essay from him in Google Classroom, okay? So I'm going to click on the Screencastify extension, which is living up there in my Chrome browser. Forgive the lag time here. Okay, so immediately I can see that I can record my desktop. I can record just one browser tab, or I can just record my webcam, okay? Recording your webcam only would be a great way to kind of do a short little greeting, like, hi kids, how are y'all today? This is our plan. But for today's purpose, I'm going to record my entire desktop. Your microphone, you definitely want to turn it on or they're not going to hear you. Right now, it's set to using my default microphone, okay? Um, and you can see that it's picking me up right here. You can embed a webcam, okay? So that means your face will be down in the bottom right corner of your screencast, okay? So you don't have to, you can turn that off, but I think it personalizes the video. I'm gonna click on show more options. Screencastify will count you down before the recording starts. If you want more than three seconds, you can choose five or 10. Lastly, you wanna turn on the show drawing tools, okay? Which I'll show you what that means, but those are the annotation features that I was talking about earlier. And then you click record. So here comes my webcam right there on the bottom right, okay? Um, I'm gonna click on record my entire screen and then I'm gonna click share. It tells me that it's sharing, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide it. And then I get a countdown. So here are my drawing tools that I have down here, okay? And I'll show you how it works. Kirby, I really like your writing. Thank you for researching Lewis Sacker and um, your writing was just really personal. It was obvious that you have read his books, at least uh, at least one of them, Sideways Stories from Wayside School. I bet you've read more. Um, just want to kind of give you some feedback. So I'm going to open up a marker. I'm going to maybe make it green. So Lewis Sacker is a great author in my opinion. I'd like you to kind of look at the grammar in this sentence right here. It's a great thought. Think about how you would qualify that in my opinion. Um, I'm noticing right here, for example, okay? Also check out your spelling there. Um, and then down here, I think you were trying to say, in fact, just to be safe, don't read the story if you're ever planning to read again or eat again. And then I noticed here you want to check some punctuation out here. Um, but man, I really liked your thoughts here. Um, 
Oh, it's obvious you've read Holes as well. That's a classic. So I, I think if you just kind of look at some of these suggestions I'm giving you here, that you'll be great. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to stop giving him feedback. So I'm going to come back up here to Screencastify. I'm going to click it, and I'm going to stop my screen recording Okay, by clicking stop. Immediately, I'm going to be taken to a new tab. That's okay. It's completely normal. Uh, the tab is your Screencastify tab, and it's your it's your recording. Okay, so I can pause it right here, and uh, I want to immediately give it a title. So I'm going to call it Kirby Feedback. Okay, um, and hit enter. So this click to unmute, it automatically mutes the video, uh, which is actually cool, doesn't immediately start talking, but if you unmute it, and you can hear, uh, you can hear there. Um, all right, so I told you that you can trim a little bit of your video by clicking the scissors here. If I want to jump a little bit to the front there and trim off, I would just click save trim. I'm going to cancel that right now. Also, I can trim from the end. Okay, so I can drag and I can trim the end off of it as well. Okay, but that's pretty much all that you're going to really do there on Screencastify. Um, so I want to talk next about how you're going to get this feedback to the student. Okay, so right here you see where it says share. So let's talk about this. You can share it directly to Classroom, which is super helpful, okay? Now, this video is really meant for only one student, not your entire class. Now, if you are creating a video tutorial over solving a math problem or explaining an assignment, you would definitely want to share it to your whole class. But you'll notice right here that I can really only make an assignment, ask a question I can't, really drill in and just send it back to Kirby. So this is not what I want to do right now, okay? I can publish it to YouTube, okay? Or I could get an embed code. But I want to show you this option here to copy shareable link. So I'm going to copy that shareable link and I'm going to go back over here to, um, to his essay. And I'm just going to highlight Kirby's name and I'm going to leave a comment for him. I'm going to say, please watch my video feedback. And I'm going to paste that link in there. Okay, so then when you return this to the student, however you're doing it, if you're sending it, you know, if you're returning it in Google Classroom, they would see that. Now, you are going to need to obviously train teacher students, hey, go look at my comment and click and watch. So when he clicks on it, it's going to launch the video in Google Drive and he can just literally watch what I, the feedback that I gave to him. And he's just going to click play and he's going to, and he's going to see there. And then he, he can see you because remember you turned on your webcam now. All right, y'all. So that is Screencastify in a nutshell. I want to talk here about Google Drive before I jump to my next tool. Um, every video is archived to Google Drive. And I want to show you this. So when I go to Google Drive, it automatically makes a folder uh, there for your videos to live in. Sorry about the lag here. I'm like streaming. I'm also screen recording. So there's a little bit of lag there. But um, it's going to have a folder called Screencastify. That's what it is. All right. I'll come back to it later. You guys get the idea. There's going to be a folder there um, that says Screencastify and the recording will be in there. All right, you guys, so that's kind of it for Screencastify. So I'm going to keep uh, keep rolling here and talk about Flipgrid, um, which is the next tool uh, that I'm going to share. So y'all, Flipgrid is probably, truthfully, my favorite ed tech tool of the last couple of years. 
it's truly when you think about transforming like this video space, it's innovative, it's transformative, um, and it's private, it's safe. So uh, it's a free video discussion platform offered by Microsoft, um, and it helps you hear from every single student in your class. It's also fun. Uh, we're going to get into some of that and why it's so much fun. It's web-based, which I'm modeling for you today, the web version. There's also an iOS or an Android app uh, that can be used. Um, I linked here to a Flipgrid consent form that you can give to your parents. Even though it's completely safe, it's COPA compliant, uh, meaning it's it protects according to the Children's Online Privacy and Protection Act. It's still a good idea since it's a, it is a video platform where you're going to be communicating with students and it's not in our AUP to send a, a consent form home just so parents can sign and they can join. But it's linked right there um, if you want to, to, borrow, to grab that and kind of use it or make it your own. So I want to talk about how flip grids are structured. So flip grids are made up of grids or the home for your class. You can create as many grids as you want to. Then within the grid, you can post unlimited discussion prompts or discussion starters. Those are called topics. So I like to think of a, of a grid as your classroom and the topics as assignments, if that makes sense. How do students access it? Well, students can log in with their Google account, okay, because it's partnered with that. Or you can create a list of IDs for students to access. Um, I would advise making it a common number that the students are going to know, perhaps like their lunch number. Um, so it's easier for you, I'm just going to be real honest, as a teacher, it's really it's easier for you if the students log in with their Google accounts because you don't really have to create anything, right? You just say, log in with your Google. However, using the IDs that you create really might be more helpful for students maybe younger, uh, pre-K, you know, kinder first, um, or students that maybe don't really use Google, like they haven't used it before. Now, I realize during this time of COVID closure, everyone's figuring out their Google account pretty quick. But I just wanted to share that, and I'll model all this. Um, topics, again, within the grid, topics are what students will respond to. So again, think an assignment. So within your topic, you as the teacher can provide anything you want your students to see or review prior to responding. Okay, so for example, videos, links, uh, Anything like that that you want them to maybe read or see before they actually answer. Um, I'm going to share this conversation starters playlist again. If you have the slide deck, uh, you can click on it, but I'm not going to go into it right now, but I'll talk about it at the end. But these are awesome to kind of get the conversation flowing on Flipgrid. So once you set up your grid, and created your first topic, you wanna to share that flip code, it's called a flip code, with your students so they know how to join. You can copy and paste a link to your grid, for example, in Google Classroom, Seesaw, email parents, or however you use, however you communicate. If you have younger learners, consider sharing that code with their parents. Okay, maybe with Google Voice or texting, email, things like that. So let's jump into Flipgrid, y'all. So um, it's just flipgrid.com and you're going to click educator login and you are going to sign in with your Google account. Okay. You don't have to create a new account. Now I've already signed in. That's why it isn't asking me to sign in. But once you click sign in, choose login with Google. Okay. So you can see here that I have about 11 grids going on. Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through the creation of this. So I'm gonna click add a new grid. And I'm just gonna call it, um, just for ease, Mr. Dean's class. You can call it whatever you want. You can do it by period if you're like a secondary teacher, um, however you wanna organize it. I'm just gonna do Mr. Dean's class. So the grid type, this is what I was talking about. You can choose to have students join with their school email or with a student ID, or you can make it public. OK, 
Okay, for our purposes, if you're really going to have students on there, I'd consider using school email or student ID. Don't do a public one unless you really have permission from the parents would be my suggestion there. Uh, for this uh, webinar, I'm going to choose school email. So here's the flip code. Okay, now you'll notice that I can change it. So I can leave Dean. I might even try Mr. Dean. Oh, it's available. That's actually shocking. Dean is a pretty common name. So that might be super easy. Flipgrid.com slash Mr. Dean. Say next. So this is important. Since students are uh, joining with their Google account, you need to add um, their domain. Okay, so at garlandisc.net would get the teachers. Okay, but those students are at students dot garlandisd.net okay so that's important at students plural dot garlandisd.net so this is an example of how private this is okay no one outside of those domains can join this grid okay or this uh topic all right so it tells me that my grid is ready now i can immediately share it out but it's not quite ready to share out. I haven't put anything on it, but this is the link. So you might want to save that. Again, look, you can share it straight to Classroom, or you can just copy the link and paste it wherever you need to. So let's go to the grid. So I want to talk about the grid settings. Automatically, every grid that's created is given one topic, and it's a say hello on Flipgrid topic, okay? Uh, when you go inside of that topic, it's just asking the students to say hello, share a fun fact about themselves, and uh, just kind of get to know everybody. You can edit this. I'm going to show this in just a second. You can change it. You don't have to have a hello, but it is kind of cool. And it also gets the kids used to using Flipgrid if they've never used it before. It helps them understand how it works. So let me go back to my class here. So remember, I, we were just inside of the first topic. Now we're back to the grid. So I'm gonna click on the pencil to edit the grid. So again, you can change the name. If you decide you don't like the name, you can change it. You can even change the link if you want to again. You can change if you're like, eh, I really wanna create student IDs. Okay, you can do that. Notifications. Um, if you are bombarded by emails or they stress you out, you can kind of change, right? It's defaulted to getting daily notifications whenever a video is added, okay? If you have an assignment that's going on that you're like, hey guys, for this week, I want you to respond to this Flipgrid and that's their assignment, you might want to go ahead and say every new video so that you can know, oh, hey, Johnny or Samantha, they responded. But it's up to you. I'm going to leave it on daily for right now, and you'll get kind of one daily digest of, like, who all responded. Um, you can allow students to basically follow your grid and get notifications. Um, you can also allow or disallow students to download their video that they create. They can't download another student's video, okay? But if you have any concerns about that, you can turn that off and they can't download it. But if it's just them that they're downloading, it shouldn't be a problem, okay? You can actually hide the grid if you wanna create it and get it all set up, but you don't want your students to see it yet. You can also display auto-generated captions. It really helps if you're really in a quiet area, but you can turn on auto-generated captions. Um, if you have a cover photo right now, this is my cover photo. You can upload your own if you want to, or you can pick. They have a ton down here. So just by clicking on it, it will update, uh, or it should. There's kind of a lag. Sorry about that in my grid there. All right, so I'm gonna click up, update grid. Uh, I guess I didn't really update anything. There we go. All right, so next, I want to go into Say Hello on Flipgrid. And I want to talk a little bit about a topic. So I'm going to click Edit. This is, again, what the students would respond to. So instead of Say Hello on Flipgrid, I'm going to say... Um, say hi 
to everyone. Now, you can give them as little as 15 seconds to talk or as long as 10 minutes. Okay? Could be a meeting, but it's up to you. I'm going to leave it on a minute 30. Then this is where you give them their message. So, welcome to Flipgrid. You could even say, welcome to our class Flipgrid. You can edit it, whatever you want to say. But I would leave these directions because tap the green plus to open the camera, then record a video. That The students will need to know that. Okay. Then they're saying, say hello. You might want them to say their name. Okay. Say hello and introduce yourself. Of course, hopefully everybody knows themselves. And then share a fun fact about yourself. Okay. Again, you can edit and make this whatever you want. I kind of like the little hello gif. You can change it if you want to. This is called a focus. If you delete it, it'll let you add another one. So you can give another tip. So if you think your students are going to need more guidance, you can give them more directions here. Um, then here are the topic attachments. So let's say that this was not a welcome grid, but this was actually I, you know, an assignment. Students, I want you to watch this video. I want you to read this article. I want you to do something first, then respond to the grid. This is where you would add an attachment. So it has to be a link. So if you have it in your Google Drive, you can link to a document in your Google Drive. You, then you want to give the link a title. All right, this next one is video moderation. If you turn that on, new videos from your students will be hidden until you approve them. Okay, so this can be a good feature. Uh, you might want to turn it on, say, at night or on the weekends when you're not really checking Flipgrid to kind of give yourself peace of mind that they're not posting anything there that you don't know about. Student-to-student uh, -student replies. They can reply to each other uh, via video, but if you have some, if you're like, you know what, I need to kind of gradually release my students into that, you can turn it off. It's up to you, Okay. Uh, then, of course, you can make your topic frozen or hidden or active, okay? Then you can actually set a default end date. So if you want if you want peace of mind saying, you know what, I know this grid will no longer be active in like two weeks, you can set that, okay? Um, students can add filters, stickers, drawing, and text to their videos and selfies. You can choose, hey, I don't want their videos to be silly, but I'm okay with their selfies being silly. I say let them both, you know, have fun on both of them. Um, allowing students editing, I would do that. Um, then Flipgrid does a rubric. We're not going to get into that really deep today, but you can give feedback to students based on their ideas and their performance. You can also add custom feedback here. So I'm going to click update topic. So my topic is updated now. So I'm going to kind of show you from my side how it works. Okay, but again, remember, this is what you would share or you'd click share. And this is what you would give your students. So maybe in Google Classroom or anything like that. But I'm going to show you how a teacher would do it. So click on record a response. It immediately launches the camera. Okay, so you can see me there. So if I click on the sticker, this is where it gets fun. So I'm going to give myself maybe like a hat to wear. There we go. Oh, I think I need this top hat. Okay, so I can position it. Okay, then I think I also want to give myself glasses. So here, I'll take my other glasses off. Now you gotta kind of stand like, or sit like where the glasses are on your face. Hey, Mr. Dean's class, I'm glad to see everybody. I just wanted to say hi and kind of tell you what our expectations are gonna be for this week of learning. Uh, so pay attention. So I can pause it there, okay? So then I can go next, and I can edit 
If I need to trim it, anything like that, I can do some mild editing there. But then I can add more video content by clicking Add More, okay? So if you see these three dots right here, you can click there, and I wanna talk about what you can do. This is brand spanking new, y'all. So you can record your screen. So just like I did in Screencastify, you can do that here. You can also add a video clip. So if you already have a video that maybe you've created a tutorial already or you have something, you can actually just upload that video here. Or you can just record, uh, or you can turn off the audio. Again, not really sure why you would do that. But I'm gonna do a screen recording real quick. And it tells me that I can click start screen recording. I'm going to share my whole screen. And look, I get a camera down there. All right, it doesn't keep, this is interesting, it doesn't keep my hat and my glasses there. So I'm gonna click share, gives me a countdown. So now I can go over to say a slide deck that maybe has some lessons on it, okay? And I can talk through and I can explain things, okay, to my students. So then when I come back, I click stop recording. So now you'll notice, look, there's two clips on the timeline, okay? So um, I could, if I wanted to, I could reorder them. So I could drag this second clip in front of the first one. Not really sure why I'd want to do that, but if you have quite a few different clips, you can, but I'm going to change it back here. So you'll notice I introduced kind of what's going on with this, this is what we're doing. Then I did a screen recording to clarify what I said, to model for them, ways that they can be successful. And then I'm going to click next. It always wants a selfie. That's what I was talking about. Remember, you turned on video and selfie. So I'm going to do, oop, get some Kanye glasses going on there. And I'm going to do my, I got to get it lined up, do my selfie. All right, there we go. So then can say next. And so that's what my students will see on the post. So, like, oh, that's Mr. Dean. I need to listen to that. So they're going to click on it and they're going to watch that video. So again, you can change your display name to your proper name if you want to. And then submit your video. And it says, congrats, your video is now visible. So I say complete. So then now you can see, because you're the teacher, you can see all the responses. So here on the share link, I'm gonna copy that link and then um, hopefully pull up what the students would see when they go here. So they log in with Google. All right, so here's what they would see. So they'd see my background here, and then welcome to our class Flipgrid, and then the directions, and then they would see mine. So probably underneath in my directions, I would probably say, watch my video first. I didn't type that, but I could say, watch my video first, and then they would come down and watch it, then they would click there, and they would record their video response. You'll notice it says moderated because no one else will see their video. No other student would see their video until I moderated that. All right, y'all. So that is um, Flipgrid in a nutshell. So I'm going to hop back over here to my presentation. And I'm about, we're about to start taking a Q&A, so I don't know if there's been like a lot, but you'll notice I put the steps to screen record here in the, in the slide deck. The one thing that I wanted to say here was that screen recording is only available on the latest version of Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, okay? So it's not going to work in other browsers. You're going to need this one, okay? All right, so I'm going to hop over to the chat and see if there's any questions.